Hello, I'm Mark. And I'm Cindy. And we're the hosts of Mercy on Display, a storytelling podcast about God's mercy in people's lives. From dating to marriage, parenting to careers, and everything in between. We hope you'll be inspired, encouraged, and grounded in God's purpose for your own life. We're glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. This month, we all concentrate on romance and one another, giving gifts, being romantic. So Cindy and I, we are concentrating on marriage this month. So stay tuned for this conversation. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the show. I'm very excited today to be talking about marriage with my husband, Mark. Um, We have been praying about sharing this we actually had seven different points we wanted to share with you but as we talked about what we wanted to share the lord started defining specifically this topic and this topic relates to honoring the lord in your marriage and placing him above your spouse so i guess we're going to start with a verse Mm mm-hmm This verse is a reminder for me every time that something becomes an obsession or an idol or something that distracts me. And it's called a Shema in Hebrew, I believe. It begins with, listen, Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength really concentrating on the Lord being one and really the nothing in our life could ever take over, take over his place. The reason I read this um, verse is really coming down to what is your relationship with the Lord? So I think this episode goes towards those who are still early in the relationships that are, they are courting or dating right now. Those who have been married but are struggling in their marriage mark and i have been married now for six years and going into we're in our seventh year right now and we have had a lot of time to learn about our marriage and i do recall being in our first few years of marriage and people would say you guys look like you're newlyweds and i think that kind of lasted into our third year of marriage and now we're into our sixth and seventh year, uh, starting our seventh year of marriage, and people still kind of make that comment jokingly that we care for one another, love one another, and people will ask, you know, or share about their struggles, and they will ask, like, how is it that you guys make it work? Um, how is it that you guys seem to have really good communication? Or I even have older women who are in their 60s or 70s say well that's really kind that your husband takes care of you this way or that way and then they share and disclose that their husbands don't take care of them that way um and or they'll say the same for mark they'll tell him that he's a very Mm. lucky guy (laughs) yeah yeah to have somebody as caring as cindy and and as you were sharing um all of this and i recall from from the beginning it constantly hearing that um the honeymoon phase like oh, oh the honeymoon phase you are in the honeymoon phase honeymoon phase and and kind of with some a little bit of you know some uh, details that it will wear off yeah i was not a fan of those comments to be honest um they kind of hurt my heart a bit because i felt that um, I really wanted to work in our marriage. Um, so going back just a little bit to the beginning before. So when we decided that the Lord had placed us for each other to be married. I think when we saw that, when well, the Lord has placed. Yeah, when we saw that, we knew already that marriage is forever. 
and that divorce is out the door. And we have literally burned the ships. We knew that we want, we're going into a marriage to make sure that whatever happened with life, we were going to work it out. Mm -hmm. And so we took a premarital class, which we've talked about in a few episodes, and it was with a church in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. And I, our pastor there shared the book about marriage. It was the first book on marriage that we read, and it was called The Meaning of Marriage by Timothy Keller. And on it, it talks about your relationship with the Lord and being able to serve one another, how the Lord, um, Jesus, he actually served and died for the church as his bride. And in the same way, men need to love their wives in that way, and women need to respect and submit to their husbands. I think back then I didn't really agree with it. I thought, how in the world do I submit to a man when I have been taught all my life that I shouldn't? You know, that I need to be supporting myself, that my career comes first. That but I value uh, myself. Yes, yeah. and as I continue to learn about discernment and the word, um, I started seeing things very clearly. You know, the, the, the word calls for men to step up and take care of their wives. And it's a really big way. It means that you have to care for them so much that you're willing to die for them. And it doesn't call women to do that. It doesn't call me to die for you, you know, but it calls me to be your helper and the warrior next to you. Mm -hmm. And so as we were uh, talking about this, he said one key thing. He said, if you want to be closer to your relationship with your spouse, you have to get closer to Jesus. And it looks like a triangle, so mm -hmm. the closer that you get one point gets to the other, the closer it is to the centermost point. And I think that is something that we held on to and have and continually do now. Um, I recall that analogy. And I, I had to think about it for a second, and I love the concept because it makes so much sense. Well, at least of from the, be from the beginning. Maybe I'm not sure if I really grasped, uh, totally grasped, um, of it, I'm not sure if I totally grasped the concept uh, really well, but I remember that it took time. It took time through the trials that we started going through as a husband and wife, and they were difficult. And I really had to learn how to seek out the Lord in order to have peace in our home. And, uh, me, and I'm talking about the Lord's peace, the Lord's help when you seek the lord and both of you move towards the lord that's the only way that both of you can be close to one another as well you, you grow grow uh, with each other when we wrote our vows i remember that we said when things become difficult and i promise you this that i would kneel next to you to pray about it and i think our first year of marriage we were really discovering how to communicate that was a challenge mm. for us. Definitely. Um, we're both extroverts, so we both like to speak our mind. But when things get hard, we used to just shut down. Yeah, that was actually I. That's something that I discovered and saw, and I didn't honestly, ha I didn't have an answer for it myself. And it took a lot of the Lord's help and, with, uh, and also your patience and your love and care for me that it took um, for me to get out of my shell because it, um, I don't think you really trusted the relationship even then. You've, you've said that before and I didn't know. What do you mean? You don't trust me. We are married. Like, how did you not trust me? We are in this marriage. That was one of the questions that I had, but then I realized that you just needed your own time. You needed your own space and needed to be a uh, safe place for you to be able to speak to your wife and at first i thought okay I, we have become upset with each other we don't agree on something and he leaves and he goes into a room and i'm thinking okay he's just cooling off needing some time off but then the, the, there will be no discussion followed and i didn't know what to do and so i try to get things out of you i try to pull things out of you and that wasn't helping and that that was really difficult, um, a difficult phase in first years of marriage. So perhaps you've had this before or you're currently having this right now. What we can tell you is you have to place the Lord first. So what are some things that we could share now about how we do that? 
I think it really ta- it takes uh, it will take your spouse and along with yourself to discover those things. Like Cindy said, both of us are extroverts, and I thought I love people. I love to socialize. I I love to be around um, other individuals. That's where I get my most energy. And but I had no idea that when it came to conflict, and if I didn't have an answer for myself. Um, or, or for the both of us that I shut down and it just sh- I closed up like a clam and it's and it took such a long time in order to open up and that was a journey of its own and my suggestion would be that both the you and your spouse that you you make a decision to seek out the Lord when they're when there is difficulties in your life, in your, in your marriage, and something that you uh, heard or you came across, something that you can get over, uh, whatever that might be, that first of all, you come to God, that both of you make that decision that you come to the Lord in prayer. Second, I would, I would say, is go to your church, go to your local church and see, is there are you able to speak to a pastor? Are you able to sit down with the pastor to ask for, ask for guidance? Because our pastors, our elders around us, they are in that position in order to steward us, in order to help us. And maybe your church um, has a, a Christian counselor, uh, Christian counseling. Yeah, and I know that just to get even a little bit more personal, there were some issues that we couldn't solve ourselves. In our first year of marriage, um, it was mainly on communication, but we didn't have the con- we had we had the Lord in our lives, but I don't think we spent so much time with the Lord as we could have on our daily basis. But instead, it was you know only on Sabbath or on Saturday for us. So that's the only time that we felt like that's when we rest and we spend time with the Lord even more. We would pray in the morning, pray in the evening, but we didn't actually pray in every single moment could and so when we were struggling as a couple and we weren't going to the work directly all the time in the very beginning we actually we actually asked for a a pastor to talk to us to pray for us and pray with us and we also asked them to to direct us to a ministry uh, counselor and we got to talk about very personal things that we were able to solve afterwards and after that we we always remind ourselves of love remembers no fault and it was definitely a struggle to go from we are not communicating and therefore we're upset to now we're forgiving and we're going to be okay. But if it had not been seeking out the help of people who are in the word often and pointing you back to Jesus, I don't think we could have been able to solve things easily and be able to move forward in our marriage. Yeah, I 100%. I agree. Yeah, now come to our second year of marriage, we're communicating better. I mean, for you, it was having that safe space. For me, it was having more communication. I wanted more communication. I didn't want someone who was just shut down. But I, I know that I was committed. And not only was I committed, I, I loved you so much. But I already knew that no matter what happened, like the Lord had me, which is kind of, in his hands he already had me in his hands so moving forward i already i already knew that no matter what would happen in my life whether that was good or bad i could always trust in him that can come to him in prayer and you know nowadays you hear people talking about marriage as if it's a contract i remember sharing this with you in law school i was in family law taking classes and my professor brought up marriage and how prenups are the usual and the norm they're becoming more um popular they're becoming more popular and there was a young woman behind me who said that she totally agreed 100 percent that a prenup is what is required even her upcoming marriage her wedding and that that is how she was going that she believed all marriages should be and i remember becoming a little bit upset hearing that and I raised my hand and I did a counter argument and I said that whenever you begin your first year of marriage you're one person and as you are 
being molded, you know, for those who are non-believers, is life that's happening to you. You're being molded into a different person year by year. You're not the same person in five years, in 10 years, 15 years, and 20 years. And marriages that are not based on a rock, on Jesus, they fall apart mm -hmm. very quickly. And that's why, what, over 50% of marriages end in divorce. I mean, I, that rate must be a lot higher now. <laughs> but it was really sad to hear um, the people in my class arguing for prenups, for being ready. And I remember telling them, like, you are, as much as you talk about a human being being a malleable person, you're not going to marry that same person again in five or 15 years. That person changes as someone new. And if you're going to be relying on, well, I can divorce him at any time, then how are you meant to actually have a successful marriage? If you have in your mindset, I, can, I am fed up with the way this is happening instead of I want to resolve the issue and that person's on the same page of I want to resolve the issue, then how are you going to be able to move forward in your marriage? And I, I definitely knew um, that the, the what they were discussing was wrong. That is the world view. That is what the enemy wants us to believe. But the Lord was already giving me discernment as I'm talking to these individuals. And I remember thinking, that is not the type of marriage I want. Mm -hmm. I know that I would like someone who is willing to pray and discuss things with me. And I remember that we actually, that topic already came up for us. We discussed it mm -hmm. before we got married. Yeah. That was on the table, meaning uh, the, the topic. And we, we heard each other out. Where do we stand? And we had that conversation. It makes me wonder how many couples out there, those that are courting, those that are, that are, that are dating, how many couples have that conversation? And uh, like, where do you stand at the, uh, both parties? And from a Christian perspective, we know that, you know, the Lord is not for divorce. And uh, like Cindy said, uh, we burned those ships. We knew that both of us, we were coming in, coming into this marriage fully committed. Yeah. And like you, you pointed out, you know, when you were, what you were sharing in your class is um, if you, what is your foundation or what's going to be your rock? We heard that it's a Christian terminology around faith, but it is so true because you could try to learn how to love that individual. You could try to learn how to forgive, but the honesty, uh, the honest truth is this at the end of the day, if you have nothing to stand on that, if you have nothing, no one else to model what is grace? What is love? What is compassion for you? You, you it could you could go through a shipwreck, or your this house that you were building could it could fall apart. Why? Because the second that you get to together with your spouse, go through a storm together, through difficulties of life, because you have no idea what does year five hold for you, what 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 does year ten hold for you. And it is far beyond, um, far beyond your, your reach and your capabilities is something what the Lord has to teach you. And it's, and for, for both your spouse and you, that God needs to be your rock and your foundation. And without him, honestly, the, um, this life is actually very difficult. And it is that supernatural what you have to call out to. And um, is what the Lord can only teach. Yeah, I mean, he's the only one that can help you in a moment of struggle and stress already. So when you have somebody else, you're not meant to tow them along. You're meant to be equally yoked. You're meant to be able to be equal partners in a situation that can be very heart wrecking. You know, we, you and I, uh, Mark, we had five family members who died between 2018 and 2020. Yeah. Five. And one of them was your mom. And that mm -hmm. was very, very hard as a wife to see him going through three family losses and I was going through two. And they were the, mo the most meaningful people in our lives. And that is something I never wish anybody to go through. Yet the Lord was there. 
Mm-hmm. There were moments that I couldn't do anything to help you in your morning. Yeah. There was nothing that I could say or do. The only thing that we could do, the uh, only thing I could do as a wife, I would look at my Bible. I will read it and pray and pray for you continuously. And there was moments that we could not even communicate well. But the reason that we were able to get past this this difficult storm, this this storm yeah. because the Lord was our boat. You know, he was our salvation. Literally, we would pray together. We, I would read the Bible when you couldn't just pick up the book. I mean, you wanted to, but you were so hurting so much. And I would read with you. And we would take walks together. And I would try to talk to you about the Lord and try to remind you of joyful things. And it was just um, so difficult to be able to get through something like that as a new- newlywed, just starting off our marriage. And I remember a very specific moment when we were um, in our apartment and I was having such a very difficult day just um, mourning my mom's death. And I remember that you were actually sitting on the couch and and, uh, you saw me just a a emotional wreck and um, you you were crying and you said, uh, the Lord the Lord uh, told is telling me to t- uh, to tell you that He loves you, and and that made my heart just really break e- even more. And I came to you and sat down, and and the words that are coming coming out of my mouth is that uh, I can't do this alone. Like God, I can't do this. I can't do this by myself. And as I was uh, sitting right next to you. I know it's you right in front of me, but all I can f- uh, feel and sense is just that you were both there and not there, that it was Christ um, uh, sitting right there on the, on the couch right next to me. Mm-hmm. And I was just breaking down and, and saying that, God, I can't do this by myself. And it, because it was, it was hard, it was painful. Yeah. It's, and I, I couldn't carry it, um, all, the, all those emotions and try to sort things out about what just happened, you know, what happened that year. Yeah, there was nothing I could say to help in that pain, nothing I could say to help in that just storm. I remember. You knelt with me. I, I you did. prayed with me. And that's what <laughs> that that's what I'm all, grateful for. <laughs> <laughs> it was all the Lord. Honestly, I don't even remember what I said because it felt it, that it was just the Holy Spirit through the Spirit. The Lord was saying something to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I remember that He made a promise for us that day, which we won't share because it is our personal promise. But um, we were so shocked that from that moment on that. We had this, that I heard myself speaking, but it wasn't me. And you heard the Lord from that moment on. I think that all the pain was there. It was not drowning us because we were seeking him out. Yeah. And if you're going through a moment that you're wondering if the person you're dating is a godly person that would be willing to carry you through storms like that. I think you need to bring it to the feet of Jesus. And I think you need to ask these questions of, does this person, is this the right person, Lord? If I am not sure, Lord, give me discernment. We asked for a lot of discernment when when Mark and I were dating. We just wanted to know, make sure it was the right person because we knew Mm. the worst was not something we would ever do. And then we would, um, we just suggest that you bring those to the feet of Jesus, that you say, Lord, is this the right person? And if you're not sure that you ask for discernment, is this person going to honor you? Therefore, they can honor me as a spouse, whether that's a wife or a husband, wherever, whoever you are. But the most important thing is that would they be willing to bring an issue to the Lord for help instead of shutting down or seeking outside? um, Instead of seeking out distractions. Distractions or even interference. 
because then I feel like the what's very very important in a marriage is that when both of you seek out godly counsel, that is so crucial and so key to where that you have an elder, that you have um, a pastor, a deacon, that you have somebody that you trust. You could be also just a someone who is much more mature than you and who is further along in, in their own marriage, yeah. who has been th- married for a very long time, and yet it's the this, uh, fruits of the Spirit are very evident in, um, in their life, and you, you just see it. You don't have to second guess, and you see, is this um, that this this might be a person that I could trust? So you pray about it. Exactly, and the Lord is not just handing out, you know, any, anybody to anybody. He has a purpose. So if your you know, person that you're dating is not showing fruit to the Spirit, that's something you need to consider. And it's something that you need to bring to the Lord. And I'm not saying, you know, just go and break up with that person now i'm asking you to please consider speaking to your pastor speaking for some counsel i'm not saying go and speak to your sister or your brother um you know just or your best friend just to talk about the issues and vent it out that is not what we're saying we're saying seek out the counsel of the lord through the word it came out through those people who are around you who are more spiritually mature and further ahead and for those who are currently married and they're you know in a stage of life that they are struggling in their marriage because they don't know why they they don't talk to you very much and communications having issues or you feel that you're not the same people anymore that you need to and you both need to come to the Lord individually you need to have a relationship yourself with the Lord and they have to have a relationship with the Lord themselves they need to spend the time with the Lord as well as you do and some of those ways are reading scriptures, literally putting yourself into the word, waking up early to spend that time. in. if you have kids, I know it can be very difficult, but you can do so early morning, rise up and spend the time with the Lord. It says that the Lord helps those who wake up early. So go ahead and do that. Do that in the evening, but in the evening, you're between days, perhaps start memorizing scripture, seeking him out in prayer for discernment. How can you best serve your spouse? Pray for your spouse. If your spouse is on the same page as you, they are not they're shutting down they don't want to talk about issues they don't want to be close to you in some way or that you feel neglected in some way then the first person you need to seek out is the lord and tell him what the problem is you have a big god and he is able to repair any marriage you just have to be willing and they have to be willing to pray for their hearts your spouse's heart that their heart will be soft and malleable for the lord that the holy spirit will be able to walk and talk and mold them into the spouse that they're supposed to be. The Lord wants marriages to be successful. We just have to be willing. I wanted to give some advice to men. Young men, doesn't matter you know how old you are. If you're 17, you're 20, you're even 30 or 35. A key thing that you have to remember is that your eyes need to be on, on Jesus. And that you have to be seeking out the Lord. You could love you could love your wife, and that's what you should do. But you have to remember that God is your rock and your foundation. And be have a have a heart that is ready to learn and accept direction, and even godly correction from those that are around you that sincerely love you. That love you enough in order to tell you the truth, and that will be able to guide you in the right direction, walking towards the Lord, or giving you some advice in your marriage. Seek that from an elder. Seek that from seek that from a pastor. Seek that from from a deacon. Seek that from somebody that is way ahead of you that you that you are able to model the kind of life that they are they are living. Because a husband, it's not about being right and correct um, at the end of the day. You know, you have to go to those Bible verses that love is patient, love is kind. And we, we know those verses go on. And do, they do such a fabulous job, great job 
about explaining what our heart and what our character needs to look like, what our love needs to look like for one another and for our spouse. So husbands, or if you're, you're, you are dating right now, you're courting young men, please remember that it's not about you being correct and they just spearhead th- through, through life. You have to understand and learn what is gentleness, that there is strength in that as well. And ask yourself the questions, do you feel like that you're fully equipped for, for this walk that is marriage? For men, uh, this is a very big step and a, a very big step in part of your life. So y- if maybe you're not modeled some things that you wish or you would want to have in your marriage, then take that step in order to seek out those uh, of who you can learn that from. Have the courage in order to o- open your mouth and to speak to somebody that is way ahead of you, someone that you can, someone that is godly, and be bold enough to pick up a book, a Christian book, a, a resource that both that, that you can start. You can listen to it in audio form. You, you can dive into it by reading it and include your spouse on this journey as well. Like we have mentioned in this podcast, reading the book, The Meaning of Marriage, has been transformational for us because it is embedded in biblical truth and it really covers such topics and makes you think, both for the husband-to-be and for the wife to be. And the message for the ladies is that your spouse, if they are quiet, they are most likely going through something. And it's going to take time and it's going to be having to earn that trust. I mean, you might already think, well, I already said yes and I married this guy or I've been already married for so long. The thing is, trust is built over time. As much as we say, well, I... I know that we're never going to get divorced and we're going to be together forever. And the first few years is so nice and beautiful. Or maybe it's been really a struggle. But you know you're committed. That's one thing. But how can you have a functional marriage if your spouse is not wanting to speak with you? So for your husbands, create that space that they feel comfortable, that they can speak. Maybe... For me and Mark, I would make sure that he had his dinner and that (laughs) he was in a good space that had all his attention, that he was not distracted. It would take walks. And on the way back, not on the way there, but on the way back is when he started opening up to me. And that would take time. It literally took us about three years before Mark and I were able to have full conversations about what happened. Otherwise, I had to pull that out of him to be asking small questions. Little by little, I earned his trust. And I know that sounds as in weird because we were already married, but it really is about that. I mean, for a man, especially as Mark has all brothers, it's not something to be sharing your feelings. It's not something that it comes easy, you know, mm-hmm. because you're always spending time together doing things you don't talk about things but women we generally most women tend to talk about issues try to problem solve things out loud and men don't do that and at least not often and so it took a long time for us to get there and once we did it was really life-changing i think nowadays when we have an issue we try to we try to understand, okay, this Cindy's quiet or Mark is quiet right now. He needs a moment. Okay, now we can start asking questions. And we both know that if we need prayer, we'll take a pause and we'll say, let's go pray first. So we'll seek out the Lord together. And then we can talk about an issue. Or when we're very upset, because it does happen. I mean, marriage is not always going to be beautiful and lovely, right? But when we are upset, we... Again, come to the Lord first, whether that Mark goes to the room and he prays by himself or I take a pause and pray. We always remind ourselves we're going to come to the Lord and remember that we're not here to be right or wrong. We're here to do life together and we're here to model 
the way that Jesus taught us to be, because that's what he wants us to be. And how can I be that way in order to serve my spouse? So then you have to be selfless, and that's really difficult. Yeah. Um, but it comes over time. You realize that as a single person, you generally can be a little bit selfish even if you don't mean it. I mean, I'm the oldest in my family, and I always felt that I was very selfless. But when I married my spouse, I realized how selfish I really was. And it had to be a long journey for me to be um, to demonstrate that I could be a little bit more like Jesus, that I could be more forgiving, that I could be gentle, slow to anger. And it's been a journey. It's been a long mm-hmm. journey, but we're getting For there the a little by little. I think we're never going to stop learning. Mm-hmm. Mark and I are not perfect by far, but we work on our marriage really hard. And I think that's also key, that you're working on your marriage really hard, that you're seeking out the Lord in order to help you with it. You know, as you're, sh- as you're sharing all this, immediately what comes to my mind as could be a pitfall for individual individuals in their life is when you think, Oh, this marriage thing, I got it down. Communication. I got it down or listening. I got it down. Trust me, trust me, trust me. The moment that you make that decision in your mind, whether you said it out loud or you made that decision by yourself that, you know, I think I got this down or I am no longer going to be a student that is actually a very dangerous place to be, meaning that your heart has to be open, that you have to, because you have to be open for the challenges of life and the seasons of life. Now, it's your it's your foundation, your footing, like what's your rock that's really is going to be holding you up and weathering you through the storms. So never be in that, never be in that position of making that decision that, that you think you already know it all or you as a husband that you figured your wife out and you feel like you're, um, that, that you are checking off all the boxes. So that's something that I just wanted to pass on. Or that you got it, right? Or that you got it, yeah. <laughs> no, I can definitely say that you should never consider If you're a good place in your marriage, that's how it's always going to be. Enjoy it. Definitely enjoy it. But never expect that it will always be that way because life can get really difficult. The challenges that we go through purification in our life Mm -hmm. can be very challenging. But if you can implement those those steps of knowing to come to the Lord, having a better communication with the Lord so that you can have better communication with your spouse, being able to come to the Lord for help together, when you're struggling and finding the right resources, whether that's books and people or audio, or, you know, podcasts like these, as you are finding those tools to build that foundation in Christ, you're going to be okay. You can weather any storm, but you have to build those build, building blocks too. You always have to remember too that you have to be open to feedback. That's probably what the last thing I'll, we'll leave you guys to. Feedback can be both positive, negative, or can be constructive. Positive feedback is not always helpful because if you only get positive feedback, you're never going to know what you're doing wrong. And if you get negative feedback, you're always going to think you're always doing something wrong or they're doing something wrong. So if you give constructive criticism to your spouse in a good way, and there's some communication tips that have to go with that, so don't start trying this out. Please seek out... (laughs) Some of those <laughs> better ways to talk to your spouse. But you have to be willing to provide and receive positive criticism in order to improve on your marriage. I will receive po- uh, positive criticism for Mark. And I think the first few times I felt they were acu- accusatory. And then as I learned that they were important for me to listen to what he was saying so that I could be able to understand what he needed. I wanted to add that the space that you take the time to speak to your wife, the husband to the wife, the wife to the husband, both parties must understand and and feel like the space is a safe space 
to talk about such things when you bring something to light. Maybe you as a husband, you need some extra help in with something. Maybe you as a wife, you need your husband's help with something. And it's something that will be able to help the marriage, help the family, help the unit grow. So both parties have to understand that if it's coming from a place of love, now it, it has been very difficult for me from the, the from the very early early stages of our marriage to accept a feedback or um, feedback I would say, but I knew that my wife loves me, and she wants to our our marriage to flourish, and she it, it is coming from a place out of love, so it did. Uh, push me as a husband in order to um, to improve in a certain area, and I knew that I could trust my wife the things that she is bringing into light, and because she wants the both of us to grow. And as he started receiving things from me that wouldn't he didn't he didn't feel like he was being criticized, but he actually. I actually want to help, and I will reinforce it with why I'm saying things and how we could be better the better we can function together as a well-oiled oiled machine. You know, not that we're machines, but I'm saying is that it, we could as communicate a, a little bit better. Yeah, as a marriage. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. We hope these tips were helpful to you. May the Lord bless your day. Thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review so we can continue to reach more people. Also, make sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel.